This is a computerized, digitized design using a high-speed metallic and doing some um, lettering. I am still using a metallic needle. I have a cutaway interfacing stabilizer on the back of the hoop right now. This is kind of a decay back. I'm not going to change the thread, but I could have done it in each, I could, if you wanted me to do a sample, I could do it in each color, I could do, you know, each letter, you know, change the thread, put in a different color, so it's going to stop after every letter. Does it matter what fabric you No, I could do it. There, there's all kinds of tricks you have to play. If, you, if I were doing this on a towel, I would have to have a cover because otherwise the fold would sink down. If I do it on velvet, I should have a, there's, there's something they, they call called cover up. So what it does is it keeps the thread laying on top of the fabric so it doesn't sink in and disappear. Um, but you can, you can basically embroider on anything. But this is, this is something that you want to show because normally at this point, bong, thread's breaking. Thread is broken. Thread is broken. So people would say, I'm not, I'm not even going to bother. Ginger had a good tip. Jim, she was telling me that she, for the thread stand, she sometimes uses a salt shaker. And I put the thread inside of the salt shaker and bring it up through a single hole to try to take the twist out that of it. That was a great idea. Yeah, yeah. You just have to find a salt shaker big enough. But. Right, right. And Tupperware is the best one. You know, the traveling ones that you get, they're kind of high. Mm -hmm. Or antique shops, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Novelty salt shakers. I'm sure you could probably come up with something, but you need that single hole as close to the thread as you can get. Keep it from. Looks like there's a little bit of a bump under there. This will be my intro on YouTube. Sewing with Ginger. You got it. <laughs> we'll have to get a production angle here. Sewing with Ginger.